And in business, the near-term economic impact of COVID-19 is expected to be severe, while already high downside risks have increased. Even before the COVID-19 outbreak, Nigeria's economy was facing headwinds from rising external vulnerabilities and falling per capita GDP levels. Now the pandemic, along with the sharp fall in oil prices, has manifested the vulnerabilities, leading to a historic decline in growth and large financial needs. The IMF financial support of $3.4 billion rapid financing loan will help limit the decline in international reserves and provide financing to the budget in Nigeria. I am now joined by Amini Mati, IMF Senior Resident Representative and Mission Chief for Nigeria. Good day, Amine. A good day. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now, the executive board of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, approved Nigeria's request for emergency financial assistance of $3.4 billion, which is 100% of the quota for Nigeria under the rapid financing instrument. What was the IMF's finding in terms of debt sustainability and the country's capacity to repay the fund? Thank you very much. On, on the debt public debt to GDP ratio was below 30% even after accounting for the overdrafts by the central bank and uh, accounting for the debt from the asset management company. Um, under our current scenario of baseline, uh, that public debt to GDP ratio would peak at 37% of GDP um, and that remains way below uh, emerging market peers and quite sustainable. Uh, the issue of concern was the interest payment to revenue, as that was in 2019 averaging 60%, and that is even higher today after all uh, after revenues have fallen by another 3% of GDP, uh, given the sharp fall in, in oil prices. Uh, that is why in our recommendation as COVID-19, it is important to increase uh, revenue. This is already. This was already um, priority under the economic recovery road plan that the authorities were planning to pursue. Now, once the COVID-19 crisis passes, what do you expect should be the focus of the government and other stakeholders to expedite the economic recovery for Nigeria? Well, I think it should be the implementation of many of the priorities already under the ERGP, and it's really a package of coordinated. Uh, measures, both on the revenue. First of all, it's important that revenue be increased significantly uh, to create the fiscal space for the priority spending that is needed to create jobs to uh, boost growth. That should be accompanied by exchange rate flexibility and a more unified exchange rate, which will help unlock some investment and come in uh, more long-term stable investment. What we have seen so far was a lot of carry trade and short-term investment that had come in. That should be accompanied by a tight monetary policy to keep inflation low. And then last but not least, structural reforms, both governance, both power sector, uh, both on financial inclusion, a banking sector that has more capital so that we can land. All of that package of measures is needed to unlock growth and make sure that Nigeria can reach its, its potential. All right. And in terms of transparency in the utilization of these funds made available by the IMF, what tracking mechanism would your team use to confirm that the loan is used for the purpose for which it was made available? That commitment is there from the authorities, and you can see that in our letters of, of in the authorities' letter of intent, that is part of the uh, IMF staff report that you can download and, and look at. And, and the commitment on governance is the following. All price of emergency spending will be recorded as a separate budget and traced and reported in the Treasury online portal. Two, all um, procurement processes um, will be um, published, will be also reported by the Bureau of Public Procurement and will also list um, the awardees and the beneficiaries of these funds. And third, there will be an audit post crisis, probably at the end of the year, within three to six months, of all the spending that was done. And that will be also um, 
the audit would be in consultation with, it would be a third party audit, it would be an independent audit by the independent general, auditor general, but also in consultation with third party auditors. And this would also be published. Now, what strategies would you suggest that the CBN, who is primarily in charge of the sales of FX in the country, employ in order to curb arbitration, especially with the falling reserves? Well, our advice on this is, has been consistent. Uh, first, let me first um, uh, say that we welcome the steps taken by the central bank earlier in March when it adjusted the different exchange rates. So there was the several exchange rate windows. Then there was an adjustment on the official rate from 305 to 360, an adjustment in the investor and exporter window rate from 360 to 385, so that it's a market-determined exchange rate. Our advice to the central bank is that um, this is the perfect opportunity to unify the exchange rate. So have the official rate be the same as the IND rate, be market determined, and allow greater exchange rate flexibility to respond to the shock, which will allow um, the central bank and the country to preserve some of the reserves. Uh, and of course, with the central bank intervening, if the exchange rate fluctuation ends up being too large. All right, Amine Mati, thank you for joining us on the news of the hour. Thank you. Thank you.